Hello and welcome. At the beginning of this month, I did a post on Google Analytics which explained what it is, why you'd want to use it, and I demonstrated to you how the whole user interface works. Now, at the time, you could still view the old version and the new one was under development. Now, it's just been in the past couple of weeks, you can no longer view the old version. You have to use the new one. So this is an update video to show you how this new user interface works. They've added some extra features that are really interesting, that some of them are still in testing. And in order to do the things that I talked about in the last video, you do have to go about it a different way and it, it takes some figuring out. So I hope that you'll find this video to be useful. If you do, please remember to share it with other people. And if there are any bits that you're confused about, then let me know in the comments below so that I can do a bit of a follow up and respond or anybody else might be able to help you. So let's get started. So once again, this is an update to a previous post where I talk about why you would want to use Google Analytics and how it really works for you and give you some demonstrations of some real time data and, and how the reports look after a while. What I want to show you in this one is how the new layout works, how to add your tracking data and how it might look when you first set up your account. So what I've done is I've logged into my analytics um, account, which is analytics.google.com and signed in with my Google account. Now, then in order to add a new website, you need to go to admin and you'll get an opportunity to set up a profile and then you need to um, set up a new property, which is what they call a website. So you need to create a new property and this is a screen that you'll get. So call it whatever you want and I'm just going to do test because this is just a test. I don't own the website test.com, but it doesn't matter because it's just to illustrate what it would look like. So put in whatever profile name you want, that's for your reference and the website address for your website. And you can put HTTP before it and then perhaps www, it depends on what your website is, but that's fine. And just address this depending upon your country and create property. And then you'll need to go back into your website. You can see I've already got quite a few here. And you'll get the tracking code by going here the next one along and this is how you actually install the tracking code into your website so when it loads which is going to take a sweet time about then you have a few different options here you have the number which you may possibly want to add if you need to add it manually to a plugin or something like that with WordPress it says just here tracking not installed so once you have installed your tracking and leave it your tracking code and leave it for a while you might want to come back here and just check that it is working and it's been registered this is the code itself that you would copy and paste into a template if you're using html website or if you have somebody doing it for you then you can use this option down here which is email these instructions and you can send it to yourself in order to forward it to your designer for example now there are some big differences between how the the new Google Analytics and the old one is set up. I'm just going to show you how to do it. One of the main things is dashboards. So in order to see your dashboard, you go to home and you can see that this is my dashboard and it does look a bit different. It's already got some things loaded and at the moment there's no data being collected, first of all, because it's not a real website, but even if it was, it does take some time. You have to install the tracking code and then wait for a while. And you can see there's some information on visits, visit duration, and there's some other things. The new thing with these dashboards is you get a limited amount of widgets, this is a widget here, to add here. So be selective about what you add here. If you don't think that one of these widgets is something that you would find a value, then just click up here and you can delete the widget. One thing that is really good about this new layout is that you can be really specific about how the information is presented to you, whether it's in a pie chart, timeline and whatever. And it does make a difference to your experience and you, you can pick which one is suitable depending on one kind of data so you, you can have a look through that and that's quite good so I might want to delete this widget because it's taking up valuable space if you do want to add a new dashboard then you can do it just here now with the last one you could add extra widgets which give you information on certain metrics by just clicking there, there were links here those are no longer here if you want to add a widget instead now you go to standard reporting and this is where you get all the categories that you can break down your data by so if you go to overview which will be your landing page initially you can see a broad range of data which I think has probably already been added to the dashboard anyway as with the last one if you want to add this 
information to your dashboard. You just click add, add to dashboard. And what's different is that you can select a dashboard. I only have one at the moment, which is my dashboard. And you can see next to it in brackets, it says six widgets, which means I have six widgets left. If I know that I'm going to use more than six widgets, which is quite likely, then I'd want to add a new dashboard and I would create dashboards depending upon different categories. You can just put dashboard one, dashboard two, dashboard three, or you can add them according to the way that people are treating your website, the visits that you have, what countries and what languages and what technology they're using, or whatever you find to be most useful for your website, your website goals and your audience. So for now, I'm just going to click that and you do get a broad range of metrics here, which you didn't have before. So you can really select what you include and how it's shown. So with visits here, I get the choice of a timeline and a metric. I think that it's a good idea to have both. With some things, you only get to see the metric. Okay, so I'm happy with that and I can just say add to dashboard and it takes you back to the dashboard. So if you do want to add more, you have to go back to standard reporting again and click down here. So you, the categories are demographics, you can see location, language and so on. Behaviour, new versus returning visits, how many people are new on your website and how many people have returned and, and so on. And I'll let you have a look through this, but there's a broad range and you can go on traffic sources, your content and all sorts. I have recommended already the widgets that I would add, so you can see that in the previous one and just repeat. Now, if you want to set up email reports, which I would highly recommend, then you would need to go back to your dashboard and you can see that we've got email here in beta testing or beta testing. In order to create an email report, you need to press email add the email address that you'd like and you can either have that email to yourself or have that email to other people as well so you can add as many as you'd like. Now the attachment is a PDF and you can also select how often it goes out and what day of the week it goes out as well and any advanced options. Now before the email report would have just been your a long list of your dashboard but now we have to have several dashboards so if you want to get all of your dashboards sent to you, what you would need to do is to re repeat this process for every dashboard that you have and just add it. You get the option to add it to an email that you've already set up. So you, you, I don't recommend that you do that. And all that you end up with is two email PDF reports, sorry, two PDF reports attached to the same email. So it's not that different. It's just that you have to jump through a few more hoops. And I'm sure there's a reason why they've done it. <laughs> Now there are some extra, extra added benefits to the new Google Analytics, one of which is the real time, although obviously that's still in testing, which could be really interesting if you just want a snapshot. And we'll see, that could be very exciting. So I'm gonna keep my eye on that and we might do an update if, the, if it's worthwhile, it'd be beneficial to you in the future. So you can really see what is happening right now. This might be particularly useful if you're thinking about doing a big um, update to your website and you need to maybe put it in maintenance mode. It might help you to really decide, well, maybe I should wait till there's a few less people on my website before kicking them all off or something like that. Or you might just want a snapshot immediately. Another thing that I didn't notice in the last one, if you go to standard reporting, you do now have the option to have a look at social metrics. So you can have a look at that um, and involve that with your social media. So that could be very useful as well, something that I might come back to. The thing that seems to be the biggest difference with this new setup is that they're encouraging you to really drill down right into your data and move away from dashboards to custom reporting, and being really, really specific about things. So one of the new tabs is custom reporting. And this, you can set up really, really specific emails, email reports, and uh, customized reports based on any number of metrics. It's something that can get quite complicated and I don't think that until we've got the hang of things, I'm going to go into it's something that I'll probably come back to. In addition, adding a goal is a really good idea for your website because then you get a, you know, a, a really quick summary of whether people are doing the things that you ultimately want them to do on the website. So that's it for this demonstration. I hope that you understand a lot more about how the whole new layout works. I think that Google seem to be doing good things with this. It just sometimes can be a bit of a learning curve getting used to a new thing. And I'm sure that in the end, we'll actually be able to see a lot more about our websites, be able to understand them and be able to 
do good things with that. So thank you for your time and I hope this has been valuable. Remember, if it has been, then please share with anyone else that you think would find it of value and I hope to see you next time.